Got to start drilling out all these holes so I can get the smooth rod in. So it still won't fit, so what I think I'm going to do is take these and actually twist the nut down just so it pinches it. So I actually shave off probably a little bit more than a quarter of an inch just to... I got the rod to go through. Alright, I want to start work on the uh, Z-axis now, which is basically this portion right here. It's what brings the uh, extruder up and down. I have a motor over here that has a pulley system over to here. The belt that just moves the uh, extruder back and forth and then up and down. Move it up and down with two different motors that are in here and here. And basically, as the threader rods turn, it pulls this cart up and down. And that's that. For me to start building the Z axis, I need to build the X axis, which basically is this piece here that holds the motor, it's the NEMA 17 or 14. It's held together by the smooth rods. There's two holes in each piece for each of the two rods that go together on it. One thing I have that's kind of an issue is um, these pieces right here supposed to hold the nuts so the threaded rod can ride onto it, but my nuts are too big. So I had to grind them down. So I can actually get the nut inside the piece. So I have like three nuts all grinded down. On this normal size nut. Another thing I had to grind down is some washers so I could actually make it fit right here. The regular sized washer just wouldn't fit because the curve was so big. It just wouldn't fit in this little curve right here. So now I can go through and put washers on all these connections instead of having the bare nut on it. found a nifty way to get the uh, bottom print, the first print off of these little tiny pieces. They're so little that I don't, don't want to force it, could break it. So what I'm doing, make sure I can get focused here. I just take it, kind of squeeze it, just so the threads hold the bar in place as I'm twisting it. I'm meeting that first little print right there, and then I'm actually going to push it out of the way. There we go. Now I broke the plastic there. I well, didn't break it, but removed the plastic because it's supposed to be removable. So now I can take my little mountain bracket, snap it onto my smooth rod, and that's what the track will ride on. Pretty nifty. 
Arg! I made my first mistake. I got a crack down the center of this little tiny bracket, so now it's really easy to bend open and closing as opposed to what it's supposed to be, really stiff, not able to bend. There's a crack, I don't know if it'll show up on YouTube, right down the center of that. So do you need like a new piece? I don't know if I'll need a new piece. I might be able to just glue it or use it as, e as is. Because really, a super glue in the closet if you need that. It's really, it's just a ride on this. I need to mount these brackets to these pieces so they can slide on the smooth rod. I think this is how you do it. So once I go, once I go forward, I can't go back. Bar is free, and my bar is free. Alright. Very nice. Ooh, it moved. I think it moved. I'll have to check the video. Pretty sure it moved. So that means I shouldn't do it. Uh -huh. On top of grinding down some nuts, I had to drill out the threads of some other nuts to make sort of like a, a nut washer so that it has the shape of a nut, but it won't thread. So that's the first piece that goes against the plastic, of course. Then you'll need a spring, but I don't have one, so this spring, and you get your regular nut on there, and you have to throw your rod to the other end, and then you take your other nut that you grinded down, and then the spring would pop that back in and hold it in place, and then. As you turn this, as you turn the uh, threaded rod, the plate will slowly rise.